Uh, the finance helped with our decision uh, because it meant a minimal outlay from us as a business up front uh, and it allowed us to be able to start working on the machines without having to have a, uh, an investment of a sizable amount from day one. Here at Hyde Engineering, I'm here with Mark Hyde, the director of the company. So Mark, who are Hyde Engineering? So we're a business that do end-to-end -end manufacturing solutions. So everything from design through to manufacture. Uh, and then we carry that on to a customer and we look at giving the customer an end result, which is tooling, fixturing, work holding. Um, we can cut all that out and we just offer this sort of CAD CAM solutions uh, and provide a, an on-site service for the customer at the end. So what is the background of Hyde Engineering? When did you start and how did you get to where you are now? Uh, so we've been going since April 2013, which is when I set the company up originally. Um, the, the actual setting up of the company was through frustration of my own, um, which was not being able to find those services all in one place. So you could get a company to come and support on the design perspective, you could get people to manufacture, um, or I'm going to use Brown and Holmes as a good example here. They will give you both solutions. So from a fixturing and work holding, they'll do the design, they'll do the manufacture. What I struggled with was to find somebody that would do just one part of it. Um, you, you could yeah, get somebody just to do the design so we could manufacture in-house or we'll do the design and get somebody else to manufacture. Then also chasing that up with the after support, which is the CAD CAM side and being able to get somebody to do full turnkey, prove outs on site. Um, as a busy engineer, as I'm sure yourself we you know, know. <laughs> um, you don't always have the time to be able to introduce projects, um, especially if you've got existing machine tools. So, you know, a new customer comes along with an existing customer, here's a new part, there's a drawing, go ahead and make it. Um, we uh, didn't have the luxury of my previous permanent positions to be able to sort of apply enough resource to it to be able to get a good job well done, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, so we've we've now set this company up to do that for the companies. So in this facility that we've got here, we're standing in front of a DMG Morrow machine. What made you invest in one of these machines? Uh, I've got a very good background with DMG Morrow. So again, in previous permanent roles prior to setting the company up and since then, uh, we've used a lot of uh, DMG Morrow machines, five axis, mill term. Uh, so it was a bit of a no-brainer, really. Yeah, so we were talking about you had experience, so obviously, yeah, no-brainer for you to have one of these machines. There's this machine, and I see we've got another one, a CMX50, over in the corner as well. How have these machines increased your productivity as a company? Massively. So prior to actually setting this facility up uh, earlier this year, uh, we didn't have any of our, our own machining capabilities in-house, where everything we do is subcontracted. We've got a, a number of UK suppliers, so we try and keep everything in the UK mainly for logistics, yeah. because if there's ever a problem or if we need to change something, we can react very quickly. Um, so logistically, it makes sense to have a UK supply chain. So everything prior to beginning of this year, we've used our UK supply chain to make uh, anything we've designed, whether that's our own designs, whether that's customer design, so customer make to print parts, uh, but that's sort of grown and grown over the last three or four years to the point in which we've kind of decided, actually, perhaps we need to start looking doing it some of this ourselves. Yeah, well, it's lovely to hear about your growth as a company and everything around it that's got you to this point today. Um, I wanted to talk about some parts as well. What industries are you in and has this machine made you look into other industries? Uh, we dabble in everything. It's probably the wrong that's word to use. That's nice to hear that. Dabble, yeah, so we're, we're, there's no fixed industry we work to. Um, a lot of the work we're doing at the moment is agricultural. Uh, we're doing some of the 3D printed, so we've got 3D printing facilities on site. Uh, so some of the 3D printing we do, we're using for agricultural components. Uh, this, these machines have been bought specifically for a project uh, which we, we got an order for on Christmas Eve oh, last year. Oh, fantastic, lovely Christmas uh, present. <laughs> so that's going to keep us going for at least the next 12 months and onwards. Uh, so that was the primary reason for buying this kit and getting them up and running as fast as possible. Uh, but, but yeah, the industries wise we're not limited to. We try and dive into a bit of everything really. So Mike, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of technology in this facility. Are you looking to invest in more? Yeah, so we've quoted a, another big project for a customer. Um, we are going to need to have more technology. So we're looking at sliding head machines. We're looking at mill turns, possibly couples of. Um, so yeah, we're working with DMG Mori at the moment to, to look at quoting all of that. And, uh, at full, full turnkey and we're looking at automation. So robot loading, bar feed, everything we can possibly squeeze in there uh, as, as much as possible.